Hello, this is going to be a series of talks on how to design an analog mixer. I've had many requests to do this, yeah I know everyone says that, but I, I, I have actually had lots of requests. So here we go. We have a microphone one end and a speaker at the other end. Now obviously we have to get the sound amplified so it comes out of the microphone into an amplifier and then it goes to the speaker. A bit bleeding obvious you say but there is actually a bit more to it and I'm going to go right back to the 1930s and we'll see how they designed amplifiers and why so much of those fundamentals still apply. Um, that's my handkerchief, which I will stick in my back pocket. That's my wiping thing. So let's just have a look and see what goes on in here. So there's actually more in the amplifier than just that little triangle I showed you. The first thing that they used to do then was to have a transformer. That incidentally is a 1930s symbol for a transformer. And then they'd have an amplifier. Obviously it was valves or tubes then. And an output transformer. And that's off that went to the speaker. As we're back in the 30s, this would either be a wax and a disc recorder or possibly a radio station. But of course th there'd be a lot more to it than just that so let's just put in something like like another amplifier in a box input transformer, output transformer, amplifier and probably be in here would be a, a fader so they had some control over the volume. Now at this time this microphone here would be in the studio and a transmitter would be several miles away. So they had to get the signal from uh, their control room to the transmitter and the reason they used transformers was to do two things. First, to cut down any, any external, external noise coming in, which of course now is a lot worse than it was back in those days. And secondly, to get signal down the line without losing any amplitude or frequency response. There's one thing that is not readily noticeable to the eye here and that is our grounding. Obviously these amplifiers need power and so we will have going in here there and symbol there for a chassis and that would go to a ground and we've got a ground in here. Now these two grounds here are power supply grounds, the ground for the amplifiers. The comb means chassis or sometimes called earth. Now I believe it's vitally important to keep these, these two separate. If we look at, if you like, some modern mixer designs, using the term modern here with a bit of care, A modern mixer will look like this. Microphone, microphone transformer, amplifier, fader, and then some kind of output, maybe through a patch bay, into, let's keep it a little bit old fashioned, tape machine. 
This was done, or this, this, this technique was used, to avoid the use of lots of transformers. Now, there are several theories about transformers. Um, well, not so much theories, two schools of thought, I suppose. Those who are pro-transformers, that's me, and those who are anti, anti them. I must admit the sound techniques did go a bit anti-transformers in the, uh, uh, the mid-70s. And the reasons for that was primarily cost. When we built System 12, that was on this technique here, with very few transformers apart from the input transformers. But that goes to ground that goes to ground, which actually is the same ground as that. If that's unbalanced, the tape machine ground is also that ground. And you have to be extremely careful where and how you ground these, you connect all these ground lines together. If you're not careful, you pick up all sorts of interference. This is apart from hum. Whereas With this way of doing it, uh, you are reasonably safe. And you will find on the Jensen Transformer site um, pages and pages of grounding techniques using transformers, which is certainly worthwhile looking at. Right, just let me make this a little bit more practical. And I'm going to add another box here, the mic transformer an amplifier, a second microphone. Now I'll tell you what I'll do, let's do a, let's have that to a, uh, pick up for a turntable, right? So this is a very basic um, 30s, 40s style, um, American radio station setup, but we have a complication. We've now got to mix those two signals together, and so we're going to have another fader here, and somehow we've got to join them so they can get get out there. So that's another amplifier in here with another transformer going up there, and transformer here, that goes in there, and that goes in there. And that we now call a mixer, or sometimes we call it a summing mixer. Because the, 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 the mixer here sums those two signals, and then in here there'd be a master gain control. And that was a basic design which, as I say, started started back in the whenever tubes were kept, became practical for broadcast use, I suppose about 25, 1930-ish. And this, this fundamental still applies today. OK, let's look at this now um, in a bit more detail. We have an amplifier. It makes no difference for the grounding issues, whether it's solid state, valve, tube, or whatever. We have a power supply. We have an output for a transformer. We have an input transformer. And we have something. Doesn't matter whether that's a microphone, um, a record player, the output from a summing amplifier. This philosophy holds true regardless of the actual application of the amplifier. And I'm going to put it in a box because everything needs to be in a box. The negative or the ground part of the power supply for which generally one uses that symbol is connected to something that I call 
I'm going to call it GC. That stands for Grand Central. So in other words, all those points are joined together across every amplifier in the chain. This box here, this metal screened box, is our chassis or earth. I call it earth. You may well call that earth and that ground, but for the sake of for the sake of what I'm doing now, this is earth. And that will go into a metal stake in the ground, hence the name. We always keep this ground central and the earth separate, except for one point in your installation where it can, if you like, join it to there. The danger about doing that is that your pass, your, your, your mains coming in here, going to a power supply, must be connected to by law, no matter where you are in the world. That third pin, the ground pin uh, on the mains connector must be connected to earth and you may get a conflict between connecting it to earth there and there. If this is a linear power supply or a very upmarket switch mode supply, you, you may get sufficient isolation. Okay, so I'm going to draw a microphone in here. The microphone, as we all know, has got three connections. So I should actually draw in a bit more detail here. If I'll tell you what I'm going to do, as we're now into what in the UK we call circuit diagrams, but everywhere else they're called schematics, let me actually show the windings on the transformer. So that goes to there, that point there goes to ground in the box. And here are two outputs on the microphone and we all know that pin one on the XLR is that point there, earth. This is a screened cable, drawn like that, and that showed that the screen is connected to pin one, which is that earth. Are you with me so far? If you're not, you better write in and complain. And I'll just draw a transformer in here, in schematic form. So you can see here, this output here is balanced. It's got balanced in, balanced out. The connections to whatever goes here, because there'll be another transformer at the end of it, in the input circuit for the next amplifier, the tape machine, whatever it is, that has its own ground over there. So we're totally isolated. I'm just going to make one small modification here to this transformer. Because the way I design amplifiers, this is... I'll draw it like that. That's a push-pull amplifier. Later on I'll be discussing the pros and cons of push-pull versus single-ended outputs. Two schools of thought. Mind you, for everything in this topic, they're two schools of thought. <coughs> so hopefully you understand all this now. And I'm now going to destroy it for you. Because we've now got this thing here called phantom power, getting power to the microphone. And the phantom power is delivered down these two lines here. And there'll be a resistor. 
and that will go to plus 48 volts. These resistors are normally 6, 6.8K, 6 6K8. 6 but there must be at least 1% tolerance. And incidentally, don't always believe what the manufacturer says about their 1%, because their 1% can be a little bit. So we've got plus 48 volts and effectively a balanced um, 48 volts going into the microphone. What about the earth? Well, when people, when people start designing their own 48 volt phantom power supplies, they say, ah, oh, right, there's our ground. Well, if you make that the ground, then you have to join it to that, which destroys this whole philosophy. So it's very important that the 48 volts is actually grounded to that, to that point there, not to there. Now, to keep it isolated, it means that this 48 volt power supply must have its own transformer, or at least a winding on its own transformer, to keep it away from all that stuff. 